Riddle me this then. Okay, I want to give you a situation where many years ago I was asked to facilitate for Queensland Health and I turned up at the venue, it was near the ANZ Stadium, and there I was, I turned up at the counter and said, hey, Gerald here, I'm here to do your, your program. I, I think it was something on a memory course or something, I can't remember. But um, <laughs> everyone said to me, uh, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm here to facilitate the workshop. I said, mate, that's in Toowoomba. Now, for people who don't know the difference in the mileage or the kilometres, that's about 150 kilometres mm. away, two and a half hour drive. So I was there nice and early though. I was there at seven o'clock ready for an 8.30 start. In my mind, I just went, oh, not much I can do. I'll get in the car and I'll drive to Toowoomba. Not a lot of emotion played into this. There was actually just a sense of, there's nothing more I can do but get in the car, drive up, make an apology when I get up there and just say, hey, did you enjoy your time off while I was away? Is that, was that arrogance? Was that apathy? Was, what was playing on there? So the way, you, the way you describe that is that you moved from the situation and what went wrong, you moved over to a solution and, and that's part of what we, we probably could talk about in our discussion here about how can people make that jump. I, as you're telling me, I'm nodding and I'm laughing because mm. I've been in a similar situation you where know, you show up and it's for a gig and it's the wrong place or something doesn't show up. It's the, the presence and the clarity of mind. You, you, clearly, it sounds like you cut out the noise and you went straight to, well, this is the situation, this is what we're dealing with. Rather than it being about arrogance, I'm, I'm assuming and hoping with that client that you showed some humility and acknowledging and owning sure. what had happened, yeah. but you're moving straight to a solution. You, you're taking a learning from it and you, you're moving forward. And your topic is what happens when it goes pear-shaped. We need to keep moving forward, but it's how do we get out of that situation? So in what you've just shared then and, and, and at what we know about emotions, even as you're recalling that story, mm. you actually displayed more certainty and confidence in sharing that with me than you did say arrogance. Mm. So certainty and confidence is when you know what direction, you know where to go, but you, you have to have the how-to to get there. And I'm, Assuming it's, it's it, your belt to no, it. it's interesting what had happened because I was so sure that the gig was at you know, just near the ANZ Stadium. So here I was, and the first thing I did is I got in the car, opened up the laptop, and and looked at my emails and had a look, and and I had totally stuffed up, yeah. like it was seriously just wrong. I know there was a part of me going, "Wow, I've got to blame someone for this." Like there was a, there was a little part of me going, "I've got to shift blame here." You know, who can, I, who can I force this on? I didn't know Kerry at the time, but I would have blamed her then. <laughs> but that was my natural instinct. Who can I blame? And then when I, when I worked out, I went, wow, I really did muck up on this one here. When I got to Toowoomba, the first thing I said is that uh, I just said it like that. I said, man, I, I stuffed up today. I really made an error. But I didn't make a big deal of it. I just said, made a mistake. Let's move on. Let's carry on with the program. So do you think, do you think if people were to realise that I hate this phrase, but it is what it is. It happens, we do make mistakes, and we shouldn't sweat the small stuff, although it could have been bigger stuff. Do you think I sh what I had done was solve this, put a solution in place without wittingly going through a process? Yeah, it, it sounds like by instinct you just move forward. Um, what I know of you, you take action on things. The the thing that's really interesting is where you say, uh, it feels like we're swapping the interview now, yeah. where you said that you feel like you, you did want to blame someone. That's mm. really natural. We all do that. And the reason we want to assign blame or, or get it away from ourselves is to avoid persecution, is to avoid uh, that feeling of shame or feeling of inadequacy that could come up if mm. we do that. But by moving to a solution and just and moving on and saying it is what it is. Mm. That's that presence of mind that, that we really should be shooting for when something goes wrong, when it goes pear-shaped. Mm. Um, I'm hoping that when you got to the, to the gig at, at Toowoomba that you talk to, to people about what happened because then as facilitators, if we're being transparent about our behaviours and their behaviours, everyone can learn from it. So in a situation like that, taking action is the best thing we can do. Mm. When people become deer in the headlights and they get frozen, mm that's when the mind starts ticking, the monkey mind goes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. We, we come up with our stories mm. about change. And in those stories, there's reasons, reasons why change will happen or why it won't, why we're going to prove ourselves right or wrong or blame someone else. Mm. You, you asked about emotions before. The emotions sit under those reasons. Now, sometimes we don't need to go that far down. Mm. 
and half the time it's experience will teach us to, to just start to take an action. Mm. When people are starting off um, facing situations like this, whether they're in management, they're a trainer, a consultant, a facilitator, a business owner, they're going to face these mm. challenges. And if they're too heavily invested, if they're too caught up emotionally in the outcome, whether it be money mm. or pride, they're going to get caught in that trap. Mm. It's the being detached and being able to take an action. And that's why we, we tend to show people how to do what you did mm. and, and move through that very fast. So it becomes automatic. That's what I'm interested in, in talking about a little bit later is yeah, how, do we, how do we move past it? Yeah. And I know you've got some great acronyms that, that go with that. Uh, you mentioned earlier on about some of the masks that we wear. Uh, I'm not sure I understand what you mean by that. So think about when you're talking to someone and you just get that gut feeling that they're not being genuine. They're, they're trying to portray themselves as something that they're not. We all wear masks generally to protect ourselves. So I, I, I made the statement before about who we become when things don't go to plan, when mm. things go pear-shaped. The masks that we wear are generally to protect ourselves or protect our ego. So we can, we can go into the psychology of that, but if we break it down, some of the masks that people typically wear in a situation like this will be the hero or the victim, or you, you mentioned blame before, the persecutor. Um, the masks serve to put a, a front so that you don't judge me. You see the mask and then I try to associate and become the mask. The key to dealing with something when, when things go wrong is to be genuine. People will forgive you if you're genuine. If you're portraying that you're something else and you're this mask, people will see through that. The problem is that we've been conditioned growing up to wear those masks. We see our parents do it. We see our teachers do it. In fact, we see trainers and facilitators mm. doing it. They wear that performance mask when they stand in front of a group. Mm. When the proverbial hits the fan, the worst thing we can do is put on a mask because then we're hiding behind what's going on rather than owning it and moving forward and, and taking some responsibility. So what if a person has, um, say, prior conditioning and they have some avoidance issues? How do we then overcome that? How do we then jump that barrier? Because that's what I was before. Yeah. This is what I have to do now. But, hey, I'm still hanging on to that. So if we take it in the context of, say, a facilitator with a group or mm. a business owner that's leading their team, if I've got avoidance issues, that's going to come out under stress or under pressure. We were talking about personality types before, mm. that when we get put under enough pressure, those shadows will start to come forward and it will take over. <coughs> the best thing we can do is to understand in ourselves, that's that self-awareness that you spoke of with mm. Ben Palmer here on the couch, is to have enough reflection whether we've got a coach or we've got some means to look at ourselves first and get prepared mm. and recognise that that avoidance is coming up. I don't want to deal with this. Mm. And you'll hear it. You'll have the voice in your head. You'll have that palpitation in your chest. Mm. You'll even see it in body language. Watch people in that situation. You actually see them take a half a step back or lean mm. back or turn their shoulders away from you. So... When we know that we're doing that to ourselves, that's the sign that we need to step forward and take an action. Mm. Now, the how to do can be quite scary. Mm -hmm. now, avoiding dealing with something because of conditioning, something that's happened in the past, becomes a real issue. But when we're looking at being professional facilitators, business owners, business leaders, there's a point where we need to have a look at who we are. Mm. We need to know who we are now at our best, but we mm. also need to know who we become at our worst. And if you know that, then you don't run from it. Mm. Do you mind if I ask you some questions? Some questions have just popped in here. And one of the questions here is, what happens if a client can't let go of your errors? Ah. So if a client can't let go of your errors that you've made, yeah. um, uh, if I can, can I share another story? Please. Yeah. We had a client years ago. Um, it's called Acme. Uh, international client, very well known. Um, we made a major error with that client. We were handling uh, a whole division of the, of the area that affected their marketing department and their sales, and we made an error with their data. It was going to have major consequences. We spotted it at about the same time that they spotted it. Now, a lot of our team went into these stories that we talked about before, about what's the client going to say? We're going to lose this contract. They're going to hang it over us. There was a, a sister company who we were just about to get business with that we would lose that. Um, so you talk about hanging on to, to our mistakes. We, we stepped into it. Rather than avoiding, we looked at it. I got on a plane and went from Brisbane to, to Sydney with the account manager 
And we went and sat with the executives in that company and said, we made this mistake. We want to show you where we made this, this error. We want to put it on the table and show you, and we want to show you what we did about it. Mm. Now, that story played out quite positively because mm. by us stepping into it, and it's probably my facilitation background, I've been mm. trained to uh, identify the behaviours happening in a group or put the unspeakable on the table. That's what we do as facilitators. They actually respected the fact that we identified it, we'd improved it, and we'd moved on. And that particular company was very big on continuous improvement. So we actually gained more respect from them by stepping into it and being very open and transparent. Mm. Is that going to work in every situation? No, but you have to come back to that confidence and certainty that we talked about, and we knew ourselves well enough. The result of that is that we got a long-standing relationship with them and we got the business from that mm. sister company because they referred us. They said, mm. these people are very honest mm. and actually helped us work through a problem that they even created. Because I guess that's, that's the problem is that some people just can't let go. You know, the, like that question says, if, if a client can't let go of the errors that you've made, it becomes their baggage and they continually bring that up. And not only, not only are you persecuted for it, but also your organisation is yeah. and maybe your whole integrity. So in that case there, what you're saying is that confront the situation in a positive manner and hopefully we get a different response. Yeah, and the key there, Gerald, is not, not to just say, yes, we made this mistake, mm. but to step forward into it with them and pull out the learnings. Mm. And not just knowledge learnings, but learnings that will make a difference. You, you get back on it. You may not continue doing business with that company or with that client. Mm. But the way to earn their respect is to step back into it and say, this is what we've learned and this is what we can do about it. Mm. It'll be their choice whether they keep you or not. In that situation that mm. I gave you, they kept us. Mm. They kept us on and referred us because we stepped into it and we were transparent. Um, we could have avoided. We yeah. could have covered up. We could have told yeah. all sorts of stories. Uh, that doesn't work for me and it didn't mm. work for the team. A lot of people were nervous that we got on that plane, mm. but it worked. So mm. in that case, I think you need to be detached as well which is hard if you're mm. a single business operator and you're dependent on having all these clients. There's a point where you've got to be detached enough to be honest. Mm. But that honesty quite often will win more respect for you in the long term. It's a long I, game. I know of some business owners that really wear their mask all day, every day. And, and so I guess one of the questions that was asked here is that what happens if your life becomes your mask? <laughs> so you, you start to identify with that yeah, mask yeah, that you yeah. wear. Yeah. So uh, we probably both get uh, inv invites to go to networking events, to um, sit down with coffee is the classic or, mm. or come to a meeting. Um, particularly if I think of, say, the solo business operator, uh, their, their business will become their world. Even if you're uh, working within an organisation, you're representing that brand or that organisation, you'll start to wear that mm. mask. You'll start to become that thing that you're putting out there. Um, if you're constantly doing that, then... People are going to judge you by the mask you wear, but eventually they'll see through it. Mm. So if something does go pear-shaped, if something does go wrong, and you want to own that, you want to step into that and work through it or take that action, are they going to trust you? Mm. Are they going to really believe you? Mm. Versus saying, you know what, this happened in this session that we ran. This, this went wrong. It didn't happen very well, but this is what we did about it. Mm. Um, we had a client uh, contact us just the other day. They heard that you and I were doing this interview gave us an example of where something went completely pear-shaped. It fell apart. But what they did is they followed their process mm. and they were transparent about it. They were confident enough to trust their process. They wore no masks. They were very, very honest across their whole organisation. A really positive outcome came from mm. it, a really valuable learning that they could embed in the culture. See, but I've been watching The Apprentice. <laughs> See, I've been watching The Apprentice and, and I've watched the American one with Donald Trump and I've watched the, the Australian one with uh, Mark Burris yeah. and the UK one. Uh, anyone remember that UK guy? What was his name? But they would say something like, you make a mistake, you own that mistake, we can't have you in this business, you're fired. So my quandary here, my problem here is that are you owning up to something where you've made a huge error? Because you're saying it's about integrity, about stepping up and having some integrity and saying, look, I made a mistake, but hey, we're going to fix this. But in the world of big business, in the Mark Burris's world and the Donald Trump world, they won't have you there. They'll just say, you stuffed up, you made a mistake, you're fired. How do you uh, respond to that? So there's, there's a difference. There's the owning the mistake and having integrity and putting it on the table, but it's what you do with that. Mm. So... We can own it and we can draw the learnings out of it, but what do you do with it? 
the key from my experience, whether it be facilitating in business, working in organisations, is turning that into some kind of opportunity. Um, I, I've worked in large organisations where I always got the gigs that no one wanted to do or that they'd failed, they're about to fall over. Mm. In fact, I'd even take on the clients in other organisations where they wanted to, to lose us because that, for me, the thrill of the chase in turning that, cha that change piece around, turning it into an opportunity. So let's go to the, the Mark Burris situation. Yes, if there was a mistake made and you owned it, you're likely to get fired in that scenario. But what if you're able to turn that into a bigger opportunity? Mm. What if you're able to turn that and flip it to a scenario where you're able to create more revenue or more jobs or more leads? Are you going to get fired in that situation? Mm. Food for thought. Yeah.